Hello, this girl we treated recently, she is 12 year old, she was um, riding a bicycle, playing with her friends, had a small fall and then she developed weakness in her hands and legs. She was brought on a stretcher from a far off place in North Karnataka. The only thing the family said was, she was always a happy child, playing well, but she had this slight tilting of the neck. Neck was always held to one side. And it was obvious when we see her that the, her neck is short. Unlike we generally see children and we can make out quite easily that the neck is quite short and it's tilted to one side. But now she has difficulty in moving her hands and legs, difficulty to walk, lift her hands. She had some difficulty in breathing also. We evaluated her. After examining, we did a scan, X-ray, MRI to see the reason why she has developed this. We found out at the junction between the skull and the spine, the area we call cranio-cervical junction. Cranium is brain, that head, cervical is the neck part. The junction between the skull and the spine, that's an important location. It's like a bouquet of flowers. If you hold in your hand, that all the millions of neurons from the brain, they converge into an area called brainstem. And all this has to pass through only one location in the back of the head, called foramen magnum. That's a brainstem, very important area. Concentrated, everything has to, all the information from brain has to pass through this to the rest of the body. No other go. This is a craniovertebral junction. At that junction in this girl, what had happened, the bones which at this junction were in mal position. With her every movement of the neck, it was unstable and causing pressure on this brainstem. Every time she flexes her neck, there was an impingement on this brainstem. We recognize that in her imaging. The next step is to make sure that this compression on this important area does not happen. Otherwise, it will keep on impinging and cause this weakness to have a permanent effect. Luckily for her, she was evaluated and treated with what we call craniocervical realignment surgery. Highly complicated procedure, microscopic operation, in a very critical location and fix her craniovertebral junction using implants and bone. And now we see her back to her studies and we have only one warning for her not to go uh, in her bicycle in the same speed as she was doing earlier. She has to be a little careful till her craniocervical junction remodels as she grows for quite some years. So what this girl actually had was an atlantoaxial dislocation. You are seeing the cervical vertebra now. This is the first bone called the atlas. It's a ring. And second bone with this odontoid peg we call is the axis. So there is a movement possible between the C1 and C2 bones. When that movement is abnormal, there is what we call an atlantoaxial dislocation. Some children will have it from birth, some will develop after an accident, fall, fracture. What happens then, this peg of the bone of C2 will press on the brainstem, cervicomedullary junction, and that causes problem in the lower part of the body, difficulty, weakness in limbs, difficulty breathing like that. So these are the conditions in which we need to fix it surgically to avoid further compression on the spinal cord, particularly the cranio-cervical junction, cervicomedullary junction. And once this area is fixed used with the microscopic surgery, C1, C2 fixation, then there won't be further impingement. The area gets roomy, the nerve gets free. And once it's done, once the bone gets reshaped 
and remodeled into a new normal scheme of things the people the person the child will be back to normalcy thank you